All right, everybody. Uh, it's glad. Uh, it's good to have you here with us. Um, this is session number twelve or thirteen. I've kind of lost track uh, in our uh, deeper life uh, study, looking at spiritual disciplines that help us all grow deeper and uh, in Christ and closer to Him. <clears throat> so we have looked at four inward disciplines: study, prayer, meditation, and fasting. We have looked at four uh, exterior or external uh, disciplines, um, service, solitude, study, and simplicity. <clears throat> um, and now we have been through three of four corporate disciplines. Um, we have looked at guidance um, and worship and uh, whatever the other one is. Worship. That's going to make me mad. I got to look back. Oh, confession. Yeah, confession. <clears throat> um, you can tell this is totally live. This is not scripted. I don't have a teleprompter. <clears throat> um, so we've looked at at those uh, at those eleven uh, spiritual disciplines, all intended to help us grow closer in Christ, um, to become more and more like Him. But they're also supposed to bring with them uh, a couple other features. One is freedom. Uh, all of the disciplines bring freedom from something, freedom from ignorance or freedom from, uh, from uh, legalism or freedom from, uh, from having to impress others, uh, freedom from the burden of our stuff. <clears throat> they all they all bring some kind of liberation, but they're also um, if we're doing them right, um, they should also bring some joy, and that's what this last spiritual discipline um, from Richard Foster's book is all about, uh, and that is celebration. Celebration is a corporate event, <clears throat> a corporate uh, a corporate discipline that uh, we can all share in together. <clears throat> uh, Augustine of Hippo, uh, 1600 years ago, said that the Christian should be an alleluia from head to foot. Uh, that we should always be about joy and celebration, focusing on the good things that God has done, um, how our lives have been changed by meeting Christ. <clears throat> because we know um, that Jesus didn't come to bring us a mediocre bare, gray, boring, dull existence. Um, he says in John 10.10 10, that he came to bring life, to bring it uh, an abundant life. In John 15.11, uh, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. <coughs> Jesus brings us joy just in in meeting him uh, I was I was thinking this morning as I was reviewing all this uh, reflecting on uh, something that Jesus said uh, when he was in the synagogue uh, there in Luke chapter 4 um, he is he has uh, been reading from a scroll uh, which is from Isaiah um, and uh, I suppose we can go ahead and look that up Isaiah chapter 61. Uh, it is a Bible study after all, right? So Isaiah 61, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2 are what Jesus quotes directly, but uh, verse 3 is also uh, kind of useful there. So Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness 
the planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Okay, uh, in, in those two or three verses there, uh, there's a, a long list of people that Jesus is directly and expressly coming to, uh, to bless. Um, he talks about the poor and um, the prisoner, the oppressed, the blind, the brokenhearted, the mourners, those who are grieving, uh, anybody who is in kind of a negative state. Jesus came to proclaim um, good news to them. And down there uh, in verse 3, uh, to bestow beauty for ashes and joy instead of mourning, praise instead of despair. <clears throat> Jesus came to bring a good life, a, uh, a sweet life, a praise-filled uh, life. It is not one that is full of um, difficulty uh, on our own. Um, there are difficult times, but like Augustine said, a Christian should be an alleluia, a praise to the Lord from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. Um, when the blind get sight and the oppressed are freed and the captives are released, that is great news. Uh, God cares for us and we can trust him. Um, we revel in the fact that he does love us. Um, that joy is what gets us through the day. Uh, Nehemiah 8.10 is a little bitty verse <clears throat> that uh, I learned long before I knew it was a verse. Um, it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength, my strength. It's our strength. It is what endures us and sustains us through the day. Um, if it weren't for joy, there really wouldn't be any motivation to go through some of the things that we have to, to face. Um, there are things that we will not go through without joy. Um, there, there are some things that we can start. We, we get we launched. Um, <clears throat> and then as things get hard, times get tough, um, things get darker or more confusing or more chaotic. And um, because we, we have no joy to sustain us, we, uh, we quit. <clears throat> Um, and that's true for all the disciplines that we've studied. Well, I really want to. I really want to get into fasting. All right. Uh, so you start your first fast, and you're just miserable the whole time because you're starving to death. At least you think you are. <clears throat> if there isn't some benefit at the end, if there is not um, some light at the end of the tunnel, many times we will just quit what we're doing. We'll just you know, we'll just stop right there. <clears throat> yes. Again, a Christian should be an alleluia from head to foot. Okay, I got it right there. <clears throat> uh, there is a relationship between joy and obedience. When we look at the previous spiritual disciplines, or any of the things that God has given us to do. <clears throat> um, going through the motions, carrying out the task, um, can be real drudgery, it can be legalistic, it can uh, sort of suck the, the life right out of us. Um, there has to be some celebration, some praise involved in what we're doing <clears throat> to, to keep us going through the thing. But it's also true, the other side of the coin, that if all we have is joy and there isn't any obedience to God, then all of that bubbly happiness is totally fake and empty. Okay? <clears throat> if we... If we uh, how do they say it? If you live like hell through the week, uh, it's pretty hard to experience heaven on Sunday morning. Um, trying, trying to sing songs of joy and hope and praise to God on Sunday after we have lived a life of disobedience and rebellion against God 
Um, if, we, if we come to church believing that God is just going to, you know, mainline some joy right into our soul, we're, we, have, we have been confused <clears throat> and we will be disappointed because that's not the way that that works. Um, people who do that are expecting that God is going to bypass all of the stuff that they've been through um, instead of seeing that what God really wants to do is to transform the things that we, we do go through every day. Um, he wants to, to transform that misery into joy, to bring beauty for, for ashes. <clears throat> Uh, and certainly, uh, when when we experience Jesus, um, He reaches into our lives. Uh, he redeems what we're doing, whether it's work or play or anything else. Um, and He He takes what is it can be dreary and grim and painful and turn that into something um, that brings joy and meaning and, and praise. <clears throat> all of the disciplines, all the things that we do to grow deeper in Christ, they really should bring us some peace and some happiness and some joy because they're being effective. They are bringing us closer to him. Uh, we're not, uh, not so far away from him here. Uh, one of the things that uh, Brother Foster wrote <clears throat> that I thought was especially meaningful is that um, he, uh, the, he says a popular teaching today instructs us to praise God for the various difficulties that come into our lives asserting that there is great transforming power in thus praising God okay we've heard that um, that whatever we face uh, we need to do it with a smile in our face and the song in our heart just praising God for the opportunity that he's put in front of us Okay? And Foster goes on to say, in its best form, such teaching is a way of encouraging us to look up the road a bit through the eye of faith and to see what will be, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. <clears throat> it affirms in our hearts the joyful assurance that God takes all things and works them for the good of those who love him. In its worst form, this teaching denies the vileness of evil and baptizes the most horrible tragedies as the will of God. Scripture commands us to live in a spirit of thanksgiving in the midst of all situations. It does not command us to celebrate the presence of evil. I love that paragraph. Um, that is such a powerful thing. Um, it it uh, reaffirms something that I have believed for a long, long, long time. Um, back in my first ministry, there was a, a family uh, that had been heavily involved in the church uh, for a very long time. Um, they, um, they, they were sort of multi-generational folks um, in, in the congregation. He had served, uh, was serving as an elder. <clears throat> uh, his wife was heavily involved. The kids were in the youth group. Uh, great, great family. Um, and it's probably been probably at least 30 years ago that um, the 25 maybe that their 10 year old son was killed in a, a wreck he and a friend were on a four wheeler and um, came out of a field onto a road and got hit by truck um, and the 10 year old son, son died uh, and it was tragic and it was horrible as you would expect <clears throat> and at the, the funeral um, the, the mother of this little boy just was kind of racked with grief and um, stood up to talk at the funeral and, and was saying things like I'm so glad that Nathan died I'm so glad um, that, um, that, that his death is going to bring so many people to Christ. And I, 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 I realized that that was a part of her pain and her grief. Um, 
But I wasn't glad that Nathan died. I don't think anybody really was. I don't think she really was. Um, <clears throat> I know that in moments like that where there's a tragedy or um, some horrible loss like that, that we try to, to baptize that moment and say all the right things. Like, well, it's, you know, there, the silver lining is that a lot of people will hear the good news. That, um, you know, um, and what they end up making people believe is that God brings about horrible, painful things in people's lives to advance his will. Um, when the reality is, that God works in spite of those things. <clears throat> um, God doesn't cause 10-year-old boys to get hit by trucks. Um, there, are, there are accidents in the world. There is evil in the world. There are, uh, because the world is fallen and not subject to him um, as it should be, bad things happen. Um, we, we don't need to celebrate tragedy or celebrate the presence of evil. I think we should mourn and we should wail when those things happen. <clears throat> um, believing that after the tragedy that God will bring goodness, um, but certainly not trying to give God credit um, for something that is clearly um, painful and evil and wrong. The discipline of celebration. <clears throat> um, celebration should be an expression of joy that is found in God. Um, again, Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. <clears throat> it is what sustains us. Um, it is not necessarily joy that comes from within us. It is joy that we receive from Him. It is dependent on a few other things. Um, if, if we want to see what precedes joy, I think we, we have to include things like, um, like fear and respect and faith and trust. Um, uh, absolutely, there, there is sort of a, a, a daisy chain there. We can't have the spirit of celebration. We can't really fully express joy until we have learned to be like Jesus says in the Beatitudes, uh, that we are anxious for nothing, that we don't worry, that we, we trust our Father to provide. Um, and we won't be carefree like that. We won't be anxious for nothing until we really learn to trust God. Okay, so we can't, we can't really experience joy until we have learned not to worry and be full of anxiety. And that worry and anxiety is displaced when we fully trust God. So if you want to have more and more joy, you need to have more and more trust in our Father um, to fully rely on Him to provide all the good and simple things that we need. Um, we will have joy when we fill our lives with good and simple things. Uh, on excellent things and we thank God for them. Um, as, as we absorb those things into our lives, <coughs> we'll be so full of them that they will sort of blanket over our problems and concerns. Um, uh, I, I suppose it would be sort of like uh, taking, a, taking a bottle that is half full of oil uh, and, and pouring water into that bottle, the water sinks to the bottom and the more you fill it up, the higher up the oil goes and eventually the oil just kind of pours out because the water has displaced it. That's, that's what joy is supposed to do um, for us. That as we fill ourselves with the joy that comes from God, trusting Him, relying on Him, that it forces all of the other concerns and anxiety out of our lives. So I, I think that that tells us something very important about joy. And that joy, like happiness and many other things in life, joy is a choice. We 
choose to be joyful or we choose to be burdened down by the concerns and the cares of the world. <clears throat> there are a lot of people who don't believe that. Uh, there are a lot of people who believe that you can only be joyful when things are going really well. Um, but there are a lot of people who have gone without and have been in horrible circumstances uh, but have continued to praise God um, no matter what. Um, you know, just popping into my mind here, right here, talking about that is um, when um, Paul and Silas were in jail. They're in chains down in the deepest, darkest part of the cell, <clears throat> and it's the middle of the night, and yet they are praising God um, for um, for everything. Um, they're singing praises. They're not doing gloom, despair, and agony. I mean, they're not singing the Hee Haw Blues. Uh, they're, they're really praising God for everything that they're experiencing. <clears throat> Joy is a choice. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the benefits of this discipline of celebration. Okay, uh, we've, we've said that uh, each of the disciplines has its own freedom. Um, joy brings about freedom as well. Uh, this, this celebration... Um, the, the big benefit is that it saves us from taking ourselves too seriously. It is uh, freedom from being too full of ourselves. <clears throat> Disciplines do have the tendency, because we are trying to be uh, strictly right. adhering to what God has laid out that to help us. We, we really want to be focused and intentional about it that there is a real danger that it can make us into stuffy, dry, legalistic people. You know, well, I, I've only journaled for a half an hour this morning. I had promised God that I would journal for an hour. Well, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the middle of a fast. I started it five days ago. I realize that it's Thanksgiving and your birthday, but I can't possibly celebrate with you because I'm in the middle of a fast. Okay. Come on now, relax a little bit uh, and en enjoy the moments of praise uh, and, and happiness and joy that God uh, brings into you. The celebration of, uh, the discipline of celebration can free us up from being uptight, stuffed shirts that don't know how to have fun. Uh, uh, Foster says that celebration adds a note of gaiety, festivity, and hilarity to our lives. After all, Jesus rejoiced so fully in his life that he was accused of being a wine bibber and a glutton. Okay. People who are wine bibbers, people who are, are drunk um, or are drinking all the time, the idea is that they're they're celebrating, they're having a good time, they are, you know, relaxed and enjoying that moment of life. Um, Jesus was not drinking. He was not constantly at a party, but he was still f full of joy. People wanted to hang out with him because he was fun to be around. Not because he was so upright and holy, but because he was an enjoyable person. He, he celebrated uh, the, the beauty of life um, that, that God had given. Um, I don't know if I wrote this down on my own or if it came out of uh, one of the books, but I wrote, many of us lead such sour lives that we cannot possibly be accused of such things. I guess it was probably written by, uh, written by Foster. Uh, and I think you know Christians who are just like that. They look like they were weaned on a pickle. They're, uh, that Every morning they have a big shot of vinegar or something before they, before they get going. Just sour and tight and unpleasant um, and, and that is has to be one of the farthest things from God's mind when it comes to his children they, they should have rich full meaningful lives um, abundant living uh, in in Christ Jesus and full of the joy that his mercy and grace bring to us okay that's one of the benefits where we don't have to take ourselves so seriously. Uh, another benefit is the release from sadness. 
<clears throat> uh, I know a lot of people who are constantly sad that I won't say that they're clinically depressed, but they're deep in the blues anyway. Um, and I think it's because they have not taken time to celebrate the good that God has, has brought to them. Uh, celebration can lift a person's spirits. Uh, the, the psalmist says, I think back in Psalm 42, uh, why so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope, uh, put your trust in God. Uh, a third, yes? Um, uh, James chapter one, verse two, continues to ring into my ears. regards to your, what you've been speaking about for the last couple of minutes. And uh, <clears throat> people that are extremely sad and uh, find it hard to be joyful. Uh, being, having a, uh, another Christian share that, uh, that verse with them uh, and, or having and reading <coughs> themselves doesn't always ring. It's a uh, count it all joy when you are uh, tested. And uh, sure. it, it, it reads like count it all joy when you are tested. And it should be read like count it all joy. When you're tested. Well, it is it is really hard in the middle of some kind of crisis or test or tragedy. Uh, it's hard to have some goober come up beside you and say, Hey, you got to be joyful. Slap a smile on your face. Eh. Right. Uh, what, we, we, what we need to realize is that there can be blessing that comes out of it. That's the thing that sustains us. Um, I, I don't believe that God expects, a, expects us to go around all glassy-eyed um, with a plastic smile on um, because there's really horrible, painful things in life. Um, you know, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, an angel didn't come and say, Oh, buck up, Jesus. You know it's all going to be fine. No, there was weeping and sweating blood, and it was a, it was a difficult um, process. It, it is hard in the midst of despair and sadness to, to hear someone try to, to push you into joy. I think maybe it is, it's a little easier um, for, for us to walk with our arm around somebody long enough sharing their pain that we can sort of lead them uh, in, in a direction to celebrate the blessings that God has, has given us. Um, but that James uh, 1 verse 2 uh, is an important verse. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. I mean, most of us in those moments are not really looking so much at perseverance. <laughs> We're looking for, uh, for the, the end of the event. A uh, third benefit um, that we can get from um, the discipline of celebration is perspective. Um, it, it's possible for us to, uh, to get a, a different view on things. Uh, people who have a lot of self-esteem, <coughs> maybe even bordering on a, a little pride or conceit um, in celebration can see their own failings and their proper place. People without self-esteem um, can see that they have value in God. Um, we, we learn to look at ourselves in, in a new, uh, new light. Uh, number four, uh, we tend to judge less when we look at our brothers and sisters in the eye. Um, we, we look at somebody else's success or failure and because we have a clear understanding of what God has done for us and um, what his participation is in our lives, um, we, we 
don't do as much looking down our noses or putting people up on a higher horse than they deserve. Uh, one last uh, benefit of the celebration of discipline, you know, the discipline of celebration, uh, is that it, uh, joy brings joy. Um, joyful people bring joy with them where they go. Um, celebration fosters celebration. I, I wish that that was something that we did more of here and it probably is because the lead pastor at our church tends to be a pretty low-key reserved kind of a guy uh, and maybe if he were a little more uh, a little more joyful not just all the time but a little uh, a little more in tune um, with uh, with this idea of celebration maybe the congregation would follow suit I have heard that it is true that uh, congregations tend to follow the personalities of their pastors. Sorry, Roy. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's uh, kick in one more thing here. We have said, um, you know, this this so this discipline. Tina, your phone's ringing. Oh, well, you have the same one as Tina. Um, celebration is a corporate discipline. It's not just an individual thing. It is something that the body should do together. Well, what, what would a corporate celebration look like? Um, what can the body of believers do um, to celebrate what God has done and what he will continue to do for them? Well, here, here are some suggestions. Um, the first one is my least favorite one because I'm old. Uh, one way that the body can celebrate together is through noise. Oops, that's my landlord calling, so I think I better take it. Okay. <clears throat> noise, whether that is singing or shouting, using instruments, dancing, music, um, noise at the wrong time is frustrating and distracting and painful, but noise at the right time is a good thing. Uh, in the Old Testament, when God brought good things about, there were loud celebrations and they jumped and they danced and they sang, they blew on horns and they banged on drums and everything else. Um, now, God does not expect that there's no command for us to do exactly those things. But it's something that is available to us. <coughs> Make noise. Um, for a long time, uh, I, had, I had problems here at this, at this church. Every time there was a baptism, so I dreaded them because I knew I was going to be frustrated. <clears throat> uh, there would be a baptism um, at the end of the service and as they were coming up out of the water all through the congregation it just got loud and rowdy and people were doing the whistle thing and clapping and beating and stomping and be just being obnoxiously loud and it's like ugh, I don't like this it's too much it's too much for me it should be reverent and respectful. It is, it is, a, it is a birth. Uh, this is a sacred thing. I've learned to get over myself a little bit, um, but uh, that, that new birth is a cause for celebration. Um, if we believe what the Bible says, uh, every time a sinner um, finds their way to Christ, there is celebrating in heaven. Um, it'd be my perspective that there's an ongoing party in, uh, in the presence of God as people continue to come to Christ um, out, of, uh, out of sin and darkness. <clears throat> noise is okay. The body should make noise to celebrate uh, God's goodness. Uh, Angels are singing, aren't they? Huh? Angels are singing. Singing? Shouting? Dancing? I don't know. Do angels dance? If they do, I'm sure it would be perfect. 
Uh, laughing is a way of celebration. Um, it is a good thing for us to, uh, to enjoy good comedy and clever jokes, good storytelling, wholesome fun. Uh, there are a lot of Christians who just need to lighten up. Uh, it's not supposed to be a funeral home. It's not supposed to be a board meeting. Um, it should be a celebration of the good that God is bringing to us. Uh, another suggestion in celebrating together is to use the creative gifts that he has given. So like with dance uh, or with, uh, with music and art and drama, um, those are all ways to celebrate um, the imagination and the creativity that God has given to us and to others. Um, I, I remember the first time I was in a church service and uh, as a part of the service there was a, a little troupe of dancers, probably three or four of them maybe, that did this, this dance routine that they had choreographed with a beautiful song and it's like, uh, that's kind of weird. Um, I have, I've come to, to see um, that it is a celebration of the artistic and creative gifts that God gives. Uh, another idea is that family events should be times of, of joy and celebration. So instead of just cutting the cake and blowing out the candles, let's celebrate God in a birthday or an anniversary. Um, at a wedding, let's make sure that we're focusing on the, the gift of love that God has provided to us and the, the blending of two lives into one. Um, let's praise him and worship him together as, as the body. Uh, and the last one, I suppose, is, is especially relevant uh, this, this coming week and to the end of the year, and that's to recapture holidays and events in our culture and turn them into true celebrations. Like, you know, we, it's not hard for us to, to make thanksgiving about gratitude and thankfulness to God for what he has done. Um, but what if you did that on the 4th of July or on Labor Day or Mother's Day or Groundhog Day or Arbor Day? Um, you know, what, whatever holiday or special event that there is, Let's find a way as God's people um, to celebrate his gifts and his goodness to us. <coughs> any, uh, any deep thoughts or disparaging remarks? Comments from the peanut gallery on YouTube? Nope, it's all good. It's not disparaging remarks here. A Christian is an alleluia from head to foot. Genuine celebration uh, gives us the strength to live in all the other disciplines. When faithfully pursued, the other disciplines bring us deliverance from those things that have made our lives miserable for years, which in turn evokes increased celebration. The more we practice the spiritual disciplines, the more freedom we have, the closer we come to the, the rich, abundant life that God wants for us. And that in turn should bring great praise and celebration uh, to God from us. And that is the discipline of celebration. Um, in the next few weeks, uh, we're, we're going to continue um, with uh, a, a short list of other spiritual disciplines that um, come out of an, uh, another book by Donald Whitney, uh, looking at spiritual disciplines. Uh, we'll be talking about evangelism, and stewardship, journaling, and learning. Tina, you're being noisy. Like somebody's uh, doing construction. Sorry. She, Tina is doing construction somewhere in the education wing. She's working on a project. So evangelism, stewardship, journaling, and learning that'll take us all the way up to the end of 2020. And we'll be ready to start 2021. Closer to Christ, 
deeper in Christ and uh, closer to one another. All right. So there will be no Bible study next week because of Thanksgiving. Uh, then on uh, December the 3rd, December the 10th, December the 17th, uh, we will skip the 24th Christmas Eve, uh, but we will have uh, a, a Bible study session on the 31st, wrapping up the year um, together, okay? It's wonderful to have you all here. Thank you, Tina, for your work. Even if you are making a lot of racket. <clears throat> Turbans, it's good to have you here with us too. Hopefully it worked out well. Uh, and so uh, we'll wrap things up. And um, if you need to, to uh, revisit this, it'll be available on YouTube um, there under the, uh, the Deeper Life playlist. Okay? Lovely to see you all. Enjoy your day. And uh, big blessings to each one. Thank you, James. Bye. God bless.